Hello, this is James Berger with the Bakersfield, California. We are back uh, with Off the Press. And again, my co-hosts are Nicole Parra and Russ Johnson. And our guest today is Jen Bloomquist, who is running for the Kern High School District board in an interesting election year in an interesting district. Uh, And uh, I think, uh, you know, you're an interesting uh, candidate for this board. It's generally a more conservative board. And uh, I think... Uh, Nicole, you were you were saying that that there might be it might be an interesting race to have with Miss Bullfist. I'm going to actually wait, uh, delay my question. I okay. think Russell has. We keep interrupting Russell. I don't know if he's uh, trying the Atticus just trying Finch to get, I'm trying to uh, line of reasoning, the, uh, but I, we'll let you finish your. Um, see, I'm trying to leap ahead. <laughs> cross examination. I, I, I actually enjoy when you talk, Nicole. So please. <laughs> <laughs> I'll wait. That's I'll right, wait, that's Russell. That's the right answer. So, <laughs> yeah. So let's get back through those issues. Yeah. Yes. So. Lately, we've had a number of things happening at the current high school district. We were talking about them before the break. What is your position on the need of the current high school district to hire a PR firm to assist them with their uh, public relations issues? And what is your take on that? And do you think the district has a PR problem? You know, I think Lisa Kirsch, who is paid handsomely by the district, is doing a, a job that is pretty much as good as, as she can do. Because, like I said, there's so mu- there's only so much you can you can throw back when a lawyer dresses up in a chicken suit and walks into a, a, a courtroom, and and it becomes international press. So I think she's doing a fantastic job with with what she's being dealt, not only by issues that are coming from the schools themselves, but also issues that are arising from the board itself with the conflict of interest from one of the trustees. And and their their spat during one of the meetings, uh, which, by the way, I I commend Trustee Flores for standing up and fighting for what he thought on on the the whole PR issue. I think that was fantastic. So, um, do you think you talked a little bit about Lisa Kirch, but do you think the district needs a PR consultant at all? I don't. I don't think they need a PR consultant. I've. I've worked. I've also worked with media coordination. I've. I've done PR for like Murray Family Farms, uh, and I know that um, it. It's a tough job, and sometimes you just get what you get handed, and you have to make do with what you got. Um, but I think having again having grown up in this area and having seen. Uh, Lisa Kirsch on on the news and knowing about her local media connections, I think she is an excellent person to be placed there to handle situations like this. So this is an interesting year because you're not only running for school board, but concurrently while you're running on the ballot is a bond for the current high school district, which is, you know, kind of unique because as elected officials, bonds don't come along very often. And it's very rare that you're actually running for a position and there's a bond on the ballot at the same time so inevitably it's going to become an issue in your campaign have you um had a chance to look at the the bond do you have a position on the bond what's your take on it um i've been in the meetings where they've discussed the uh, the bond issue and i believe it's the um the bond about putting swimming pools in for the district correct that's that's what i've that's what i've heard that's the only one i've heard about so I would it's a it's it's a little bigger than that. It's they're going to build like I think five facilities. Mm-hmm. One's going to end up being actually um, a uh, kind of like a vocational ed facility. They're going to build a couple other schools. Um, I'm not the best expert on it, but I know <laughs> I think it's about two hundred million. Well, let's throw this over to Harold right, Pierce, education. who is our uh, reporter on the scene. Yeah, it is uh, certainly more than just a, a couple of swimming pools. It does include a couple of swimming pools, but it's a $280 million bond, and it includes uh, at least one comprehensive school. It includes a uh, career technical education facility that includes, has all the bells and whistles. They're talking about dental hygiene um, facilities that will end up, you know, training dental hygienists and um, basically creating and putting a, a larger focus on these career track kind of uh, educational opportunities for students. Mm-hmm. So now you know a little bit more about it. But <laughs> and so do I. And uh, tell me, wh- what is your take on the bond? And 
do you think you'll support it? Do you think those things that are those are things the high school district needs? I think it's fantastic. I'm all for career technical education. I'm all for vocational education. Um, as I've been saying, I, I work. I, uh, I also do um, CalWORKs, CalFresh and Medi-Cal, basically welfare intake. And I want to put myself out of a job. Um, I, I want to see our kids graduate high school and be able to go on and earn a living wage, a, a wage that they could they, that they could raise a family on. Because unfortunately, especially in Kern County, we have the highest, some of the highest pregnancy rates for teenagers. And so not only do we have babies having babies, but now they have to take care of those babies. They have to pay for them. And so I, I'm in full support of career technical education. Um, and I, yeah, I support swimming pools as well. Mm -hmm. I, I like to go swimming, <laughs> so hey. Um, but I also understand our, our schools would benefit from having those pools and, and our swimmers, our swim teams, mm -hmm. would benefit from having a dedicated pool for the, for the district. The, the, only, the only part of the career technical education, part of the, the bond that I'm, that I'm slightly quibbling with is that both facilities, I believe, are going out on the west side. And I know we have some fantastic schools out on the west side. We have Stockdale, we have Liberty, um, we have Frontier. Um, but I think some of our schools on the east side need a little bit more support, too. I know the ROC centers out there on Mount Vernon. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, but I know our Arvin High School students, our our South High School students especially, um, would really appreciate having some of that extra vocational education support. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, one issue before I move into the campaign: Did you ex were you um, surprised by the amount of uh, rancor regarding the transgender bathrooms for the high school district? Was did it surprise you? Um, was it something that um, uh, you, you know, took offense to that the dialogue was um, sometimes, um, you know, so um, volatile between both groups. I, you know, I say that because I know Fresno uh, had a similar situation, but they seem to go through it with Fresno Unified um, much smoother than what happened down here in Kern County uh, after the president issued the executive order, which was state law. Um, before that, so what was your what is your opinion about the transgender the bathroom situation, and were you surprised about how heated some of the discussion at the di district? Um, I well, first of all, I mean, I I applaud the trustees. I can't imagine it was an easy decision to mm -hmm. to accept that part of their educational code. Um, I know it goes against a lot of their beliefs. Mm -hmm. But, um, but I'm glad that they chose to support our students, mm -hmm. um, all students, LGBT students included. And I, I, was, I was surprised mm -hmm. by, by the amount, not only by, by the amount of vitriol, it seems, mm -hmm. at, at that mm -hmm. meeting, um, but some of the personal attacks against the audience members who were speaking mm -hmm. um, that I... I just found I, I didn't see the point in mm -hmm. personally attacking the other people who were speaking. Mm -hmm. it, it was uncivil, mm -hmm. I would say, mm -hmm. would be a good word. And do you think by you um, being a candidate and raising some of these issues and um, speaking for some folks who maybe didn't have a voice, if, in your opinion, on the board, that your campaign is bigger than just you, that you're actually speaking for uh, folks who um, maybe uh, don't necessarily have a voice on the board. Is that another reason, or that's I, I could see I can see where you're coming mm -hmm. from. I personally I could never speak for the LGBT community. Mm -hmm. They have some fantastic spokespeople who do some amazing work in this city, uh, and a lot of them are friends of mine, mm -hmm. and I love them dearly, and I will stand with them because mm -hmm. I know they have their own voices and mm -hmm. they can speak. They're very good right. at speaking up and making sure that their issues are known and taken care of. And I know that at the school level, with the teachers and the administrators, I've only heard good things mm -hmm. from our trans students. Mm -hmm. I've only heard that they have been supported 100%. And so I, I see the problem, the, I see the problem is on the board mm -hmm. and getting, getting those minds to evolve, mm -hmm. as it were and at least stopping the attacks.
looks mm -hmm. from some of them. Mm -hmm. And then this leads me to kind of when you're looking at the campaign, um, can you explain, because I don't know you very well and your, your political, who are some of your local political role models? And then what is your uh, you know, philosophy. Are you considered a moderate? I see some, I read somewhere where you consider yourself a liberal. Uh, what is your political ideology, I guess? I'm the first person who really springs to mind as, as someone who I have been following and I have been impressed by has been Andre Gonzalez, okay. who's currently running for city council, mm -hmm. but he's, he's a Bakersfield City School District trustee right now. And I've, I've really appreciated how he has uh, stepped up on that board. And I'm, I'm glad that he's, he's moving on and he's taking his, his fantastic momentum to the city council. So in, in terms of uh, the help you're getting on your race, and um, oftentimes school board's a little different because I think it tends to be a little bit more grassroots, mm -hmm. right? But when we look at most of the other races we've had in here, Congress, uh, you know, city council, mayor, th they've got political consultants that they've hired to run their races. Do, do you have someone you've hired or you've retained to help you with your campaign? I have actually been working with, um, with a student at BHS who I have invited to be my intern uh, campaign manager because as I've been in the political life, I guess so, since I've come back, um, I've noticed that we don't have a lot of young people who are getting interested in politics and wanting to, and wanting to get involved to make that change. Mm -hmm. So I want to bring in more young people, and I want to show them how you run a campaign, how you start a campaign, how you put yourself out there to, to run for an office, and just the kind of things that you get hit with when mm -hmm. when you want to run and you put yourself out there have you gotten any help on your own i mean you you've sounds like you've had a very diverse background kind of uh experiencing a lot of parts of the world but have you gotten any assistance yourself in kind of putting yourself out there and <laughs> getting started in this well thankfully i'm i'm a graphic designer as well oh. so i uh, i could design my own signs and my business cards and my website and all of that good stuff and i think that would have been and my facebook as well is your website mm -hmm. live it is it is it's still a work in progress okay. mm -hmm. you, you can share your website live if you want to <laughs> yeah. that way everyone can hear it but. it's it's jen for kern high dot com oh, there you mm -hmm. go. Very how about the the grassroots talking about that um you know you're 67 days out um and you have a uh, intern campaign manager from high school. That's great, but you know, w <laughs> um, so you know. But I'm assuming that you have, or maybe you do, have the experience. You you know, you have to hit certain neighborhoods every day. You need to raise X amount of dollars. You have to hit 50 plus one voters. I mean, this you know, running for office, especially in Kern County, your first time out, you want to make sure that win or lose, that you run a credible uh, campaign. So. Um, you know, while I'm impressed with the inviting the young people to be involved, and you're very impressive, um, I'm not so impressed with the campaign side. What else are you doing, um, or do you think you need to do uh, in the next 30 days? Well, I do. Um, I, I have amassed um, a nice little army of people mm -hmm. who who have been very eager to help me, and uh, I want to be a I would uh, like to get out there and start making phone calls. Mm -hmm. I have a fundraiser that will be coming up. It's still I'm still finding yeah. a location Great. for it. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, fundraising, of course, is the the least thing that I like doing. Right. Um, <laughs> so uh, yeah, I, I don't mm -hmm. like asking for money mm -hmm. from people. So uh, so yeah. So I have the fundraisers mm -hmm. coming up. I have phone banking that will be coming mm -hmm. up here very soon. Uh, but thankfully, I do have a lot of wonderful friends who are also grassroots organizers mm -hmm. okay. who get in there from the bottom and mm -hmm. get on working. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So in school board races, um, oftentimes you seek endorsements from a different crowd than you do in <laughs> like, um, you know, uh, partisan. So, yeah, partisan races. So for example, like in a partisan race, you girl, I want 
I want to go out and I want to get the, the sheriff to endorse me. I want to get the mayor to endorse me, those kinds of things. In a school board race, it's different. Sometimes people want the teachers mm -hmm. to support right. them. Mm -hmm. Are you going to go and try to get the teachers association to get behind you? Are you going to go? And I, I don't think um, you have PTAs so much at the high school level, but you have like, you know, when I was at Stockdale, we had the, uh, the uh, um, I think it was called the Stampede or something, the, the Parents Booster Club. So you the got band of parents, yeah, yeah, yeah all that, yeah, all that stuff. So, w are you reaching out to those different groups at the different schools within the area three? I have, I have, um, but I also have the endorsement of the Central Labor Council, which includes the California uh, School Employees Association. Mm -hmm. uh, there, it's a it's a coalition of unions, and that's that's one of the unions as well. And and I'm seeking the endorsement of of my union. I'm I'm an SEIU 521 mm -hmm. member as an employee of Kern County. And uh, so I, I am seeking, I'm I'm seeking a lot of union endorsements because I am a union person. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. And what's nice about those endorsements? Make sure they send a check with the <laughs> endorsement. And, exactly. Uh, they're probably yelling at me right now, but that's part of that's the that's the you know easier uh, you know low hanging fruit is to be right. able to because if they're going to put a name, I know many of the local unions they're going to put their name to it. They're going to make sure that you have a winnable campaign. So. Um, yeah, to make sure you get that their checks in the mail. <laughs> and the, the wonderful thing about the Central Labor Council is their support comes in manpower, mm -hmm. which is as valuable as dollars. Right, right. Which leads me to another question, the one that Nicole likes to ask, which is <laughs> how are you getting out mm -hmm. into the, the neighborhoods and to the voters themselves face-to-face -face, uh, at the doorstep? Because, uh, you know, I think... Uh, with these, with the school board races and city council races, these these smaller races, um, that that one on one contact um, makes a big difference. Uh, my uh, my uh, co host might know more directly about that, but mm -hmm. uh, tell me if I'm wrong. But that kind of how are you getting out there and getting that face to face contact with voters? Because the district is quite spread out. I mean, it runs from Western Rosedale all the way through South Bakersfield and out to Arvin. It's, it's kind of hard to narrow down specific neighborhoods and hit all of those neighborhoods. So we'll be focusing on phone banking. That's, that's gonna be, I think, where we'll be able to hit the most houses, talk to the most people, and, and hopefully change, uh, change some hearts and minds and uh, get my name out there. So you talked about the difficulty of campaigning over that large geographically kind of diverse you know population because you're going from i think it's like what arvin lamont area all the yeah. way up to northwest bakersfield i, I can see a huge <laughs> right, that, mm -hmm. you know difference in population sectors right there so do you think that um and maybe it's not a current issue but what what are your thoughts on how these district lines were drawn you know i know that uh, there, there was a reason why the school districts had to go to by area as opposed to at large, and that's actually changed the way the whole current high school district is elected now. But um, what are your thoughts on how the lines are now, and would you seek to change those, or would, would you keep them the same way they are when you, if you're elected? It was, it was my understanding that when the boundaries were drawn up, they were kind of drawn up to suit the trustees who are already living in, in those areas. Um, I would I would like to see some of the some of the areas be more inclusive uh, and be more of a representation of the the district as a whole uh, because I I know that some of the areas are kind of oddly placed and and there's little fingers out everywhere and and like I said with my district it's it's spread out all through South Bakersfield, uh, going from the northwest all the way out to Arvin. So it, it's it's kind of crazy out there. Mm. You mentioned uh, Andre Gonzalez. Um, there's also another trustee uh, who's running on the east side, and I'm sure the Labor Council's um, probably involved in many of the more <clears throat> maybe east side candidates <laughs> i should say are you part of that group do you you know you mentioned are you kind of on your own with your own team um 
Um, I will. I, like I said, I have friends mm-hmm. uh, who are running with uh, the Andre Gonzalez campaign. Mm-hmm. So we haven't, I'll, I'll be clear, we mm-hmm. haven't teamed up. Right. We're not running right. a dual campaign. Uh, but we're we're friendly mm-hmm. with each other. And, uh, you know, so we'll we'll support mm-hmm. each other. I, I have an Andre Gonzalez mm-hmm. pin on my right. bag. Uh, so I, I do I do support mm-hmm. uh, my fellows. Well, the reason why I ask is just because with 67 days left, it's it's a matter of resources and where you can coordinate. And if you're similar on, you know, the issues, I know he's running for city council, but there's other folks running for a high school district. You know, with you describe the big area and you're just phone banking, um, you know, there's other resources and coordination of resources. Right. Um, as you can tell, we take campaigns pretty seriously uh, in we've, this interview. And, we've been uh, involved in way too many campaigns. <laughs> Maybe, I know, we're just like... And I've been, been involved in watching these guys run too many campaigns. Just maybe phone banking and we're just... Uh, is the way. But um, So win or lose, what do you hope to accomplish during the next 67 days? What is your top two messages? When you knock on someone or when you phone bank, when you're talking to someone, what are the things, if they ask you, why are you running? Why are you running, Jen, for uh, current high school trustee? I would say why I'm running is to address, like I said, income inequality, ensuring that when our kids leave high school, they're equipped to go out into the world and earn a decent living so that they don't end up in my office. And again, like I said, I want to put myself out of a job. And I would say as well to start getting the board to swing a little bit more towards the center, not even the left. I, I will concede, not even the left. I would like it just to move towards the center and get back to education, get back to the, the business of education instead of political rhetoric and, and grandstanding over guns and LGBT issues and chicken suits and mm-hmm. PR companies. Mm-hmm. That's irrelevant to our students' education. And on that note, (laughs) nice segue to the break we're going to take right now. Uh, This is Off the Press. We'll be back in a couple moments with Jen Bloomquist, current high school district trustee.